And now, it's the live rehearsal. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thanks for coming. Good to see you all here. And good to see you there. I can't see you. But it's good for you to see me there. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. And uh, let's sing together. Thanks for coming to Congregation Orchadash, where we bring in Shabbat together. At the soonest possible moment, we bring it together. I can't wait. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. of the God Jacob for the Lord will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem he will walk in his footsteps and he will teach us his ways. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, unto the house of the God of Jacob. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, unto the house of the God of Jacob. For then he will judge many peoples and decide for all nations, both far and wide. His sword will be beaten into plowshares. Will not learn war again. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, unto the house of the God of Jesus. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob, but to the house of the God of Jacob, to the house of the God of Jacob. Good job. Good job, everybody. They were feeling that all around the county, all around the state, the good vibes. Yes. This one speeds up as it goes on. I lay in Zion. For a foundation of stone, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone. Precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, a sure foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone. He that believeth shall live in peace. Wonderful counselor. Wonderful Counselor, Almighty.
empty place of peace. I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone. I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone. A tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, a sure foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, he that believeth shall live in peace. Hebrew, Pele, El Zion for a foundation of stone. I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone. A tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. A sure foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, he that believeth shall live in peace. All right. And here's a song that has um, two verses, and don't be surprised if they sound very similar, because they're the same. And it shall come to pass that before they come, I will surely answer them. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear their prayer. La 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 it shall come to pass that before they call, well, I will surely answer them. And even while they are all yet speaking, I will hear their prayers. La 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 we do those lie lies a few more times too, but we have other things to do tonight. Good, good, good to keep that vibe going on. We're going to change mood slightly in anticipation of being more contemplative in service. I mean, that's, that's the point of this, to point us to God and to think about what we're doing here a little more carefully, with a little more effort. <laughs> The Lord is in the sanctuary. Let us praise the Lord. The Lord is present and his people are gathered here. Let us praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord. The 
song, Praise Awaits You in Zion. Praise awaits you in Zion, O God. Praise awaits you in Zion, O God. Will all be fulfilled? Praise away to in Zion, O God. It's away. Here's our prayer. It is you, Lord, who listens to our cry. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Thank you, Gary. And uh, another welcome to those of you who've joined us virtually. We're grateful that you're part of our community, and you truly are that, even though you may not be sitting in the pews here or as the case might be, sitting in the chairs here, So we've got, since we've got to mix and match along that line. As we begin, now actually, since we have begun, let me add to what Gary has already laid the foundation for by uh, reflecting on the fact that Hasidic ma mystics teach that in the moment of devotion, in our deepest prayer, we open the self-protective walls of our hearts and make ourselves vulnerable and open to the indwelling of God's presence. And that's the purpose of the words that form the liturgy and the structure for our services each and every week. And we need to realize, as Gary reminded us in the next to last song, the Lord is present in his sanctuary, that that is truly the case. He's present. Now, now let's change that. We are, we are present here with him as he is, in fact, present here with us. 
It's a reality that was understood by that strange prophet who lost the argument to his donkey, Balaam, as he responded with the words of Matovu, pages 144 to 145, how goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. Why? Because he realized that God was actually present among his people as he walked with them through the wilderness. And, it's th and that then becomes the reality we want to enter into as well. As we respond, Jacob leads us, and then we respond on pages 144 to 145. Matovu. Matovu Alecha Yaakov Mishkenotecha Yitzrael Matovu How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abounding faithful love, I come into your house, and reverently I worship you in your holy sanctuary. I love being in your house, the place where your glory resides. Here I bow down to worship you, my Lord and Maker. Accept my prayer, O Lord, and answer me with your great mercy and with your saving truth. Amen. Together, how lovely are your tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. I long, yes, I pine for the courts of the Lord. My heart joyfully sings to the living God. One thing have I asked of the Lord that I will pursue, that I may live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the graciousness of the Lord and to enter his sanctuary. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in the right path. With you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Truly in your light do we see light. And in fact, that provides for us the segue into lighting the Shabbat lights this evening. And as we do so, we're reminded of the fact that Shabbat stands as the eternal guarantee of the relationship that God has with us as his people, and he being our God. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddushanu Bamitzvata Vitzibanu Lahadlik Ner Shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has set us apart by your commandment and commanded us to light the candles for Shabbat. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddushanu Bamitzvata Vitzibanu Lahiot Or Lagoyim, Venatan Lanu Yeshua Meshechenu HaOr LaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to be a light for the nations and gave us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. We're looking forward to that time when, as the light 
of the world. He will light up the world in the Messianic age. And then in the meantime, we ask for God to shine his light on us all through the darkness that is all around us in our world, which is why we pray as we become, we become accustomed to praying the variation on El Malay Rachamim, O compassionate God. We pray for Israel and we say, and we pray, we pray not to wipe out haters, but to banish hatred, not to destroy sinners, but to lessen sin. Our prayers are not for a perfect world, but for a better one, where parents are not bereaved by the savagery of sudden attacks, or children orphaned by blades glinting in a noonday sun. Help us, dear God, to have the courage to remain strong, to stand fast. Spread your light on the dark hearts of the slayers, and your comfort on the bereaved hearts of the families of the slain. Let calm return to your city, Jerusalem, and to Israel, your blessed land. We grieve with those wounded in body and spirit. We pray for the fortitude of our sisters and brothers and ask you to awaken the world to our struggle and help us bring peace. Sur Yaakov, rock of Israel, pardon me, rock of Jacob, arise to the help of Israel. Deliver as you promised Judah and Israel. We will pray for, pardon me, we pray for protection, compassion, and guidance for Israel, its people, and its leaders in this time of crisis for a swift resolution of this conflict with minimal loss of life on all sides. We pray for all those taken hostage to be quickly released, unharmed, for confusion to be sown into the ranks of those attacking Israel and those thinking of attacking from the north and the east. We pray for comfort and consolation to those in mourning. We pray for the purposes of Adon Olam, the Lord of the universe, to be revealed and accomplished through this terrible turn of events. Blessed are you, O Lord. You are the Redeemer of Israel. And we pray not only for our nation Israel, but we pray as well for the people in the Ukraine, as we've been doing now for a couple of years. Avinu Malkenu, our Father, our King, in these troubled days we pray for peace in the name of the Prince of Peace, Yeshua, our Messiah. So, God of grace and mercy, may your protection be upon the Ukrainian people in this time of trial, especially upon the most vulnerable, which includes many Jewish people, as well as countless children and elderly people. Give wisdom and direction to the leaders of Ukraine as they respond to this invasion. Guide other world leaders, especially those in the United States, into ways of responding with appropriate force and decisiveness. May the plans of Russia's leadership be reversed, and may their power and hold over the Russian people be dismantled. As it is written in the Proverbs, the ruler's heart is a stream of water in the hand of a Lord. He turns it wherever he will. So may you in your mercy hold back the forces of chaos and violence that are mounting in the world today. Wherever there is oppression and suffering, may your spirit bring hope. Be with all who call upon your name and, establish, pardon me, and enable us all to be makers of peace and bearers of hope. And may there be fulfilled soon, and in our days, the words of the prophet Isaiah, Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, nor shall they learn war anymore. And to that we say, Amen. He is called, in fact, the Prince of Peace, along with the other titles that uh, we sang, Pele Yoetz El Gabor Aviad Sar Shalom because he is the one who is seated and throned on the, one of the th thrones on, in the heavenly realms as envisioned by our sages, the rabbis of old, where the Messiah would in fact sit. And we now enter that throne room scene, so to speak, as we join on pages 40 and 41 and respond with ha Elohim Asher, as Jacob leads and we sing along with him. Elohim Hasher Diber Mikadem Beyamim Rabot Uvidrahim Rabot El Haavot Beyad Hanevim Diber Aleinu Beyacharit Hayamim Hayele 
ביד הבן אשר שם ליורש כל ובידו גם עשה את העולמים וזוהר כבודו וצלם עצמותו ונושא כה בדברו רב הגבורה ולאחר שעשה תהיו חטאים ישב למין הגדולה. Together, in the past God spoke to our fathers through the prophets and many times in various ways. But now in the end of days he has spoken to us by the Messiah, his son whom he appointed the heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The sun is the full radiance of God's glory, and the flawless manifestation of his reality. He sustains all things by his powerful word. After he made atonement for sins, he sat down in the place of authority, beside the majesty in heaven, true and firm, established and lasting, right and faithful, loved and treasured, desired and pleasant, feared and mighty, Order and acceptable, good and beautiful, is this word to us forever and ever. Truly, these words and the realities that they reflect are, as we said, desired and pleasant, good and beautiful, which is why we continue to express our gratitude and our thanks to God in worship as we respond with the Sephardi version of Kaddish, pages 156 and 157. And it continues to remind us of that time when the Messiah himself will, in fact, return as we, in fact, pray that God would cause his salvation to sprout and bring near his Messiah in our lifetime and in our days. Jacob Leeds, once again, we, we, will, we will respond. Yet gadal, yet kadasha mehirahaba Behalma divra hirute, Beyam lich machute, Viats mach porkene becarev, Mishiche, Behaechon of Yomechon, O Hai de Hobbit Israel, Beagala of his man carev, Amru, Amen. Yahesh me raba mevorah, Leala molal mehalmaia. It bara Ya Heshme Rabba Mavarach, the Alma Ame Maya, it bara La Yisht Habach, the it pa viet Romam viet Nasse, viet Hadar viet Aleva yit Halal, Schmid Kud Shabri Hu La Eila min Kober Hatava Shirata, Hoshba Hatava Neham Hata. Damiran be alma vimru, amen. Yahesh la maraba min shmaya, va chayim te vimalenu, ve akol yisrahel vimru, amen. O se shalom vimru mav, o ya ase shalom alenu, ve akol yisrahel vimru, amen. Glorified and sanctified be his great name in the world which is created according to his will. May he bring about the reign of his kingdom and cause his salvation to sprout. And bring near his Messiah in your lifetime and in your days and in the life of all the house of Israel speedily, yes, soon, and say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and forever eternally. Blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, adored and lauded be the name of the Holy One, blessed be he, who is high above, far above all blessings and hymns, and praises and consolations which are spoken in the world, and say, Amen. May there be great peace from heaven, and good life for us, and for all Israel, and say, Amen. He who makes peace in the heavenly realms may make peace for us, 
And for all Israel, we say, Amen. Our immediate portions this evening are paragraphs 5 and 6, pages 74 to 79. We had, uh, in effect, prayed that God would bring near his Messiah in our lifetime. We now in add to that the accompanying response, particularly in paragraph 5. And uh, I invite you now to stand and face Jerusalem, the direction of the ark, as we use this as our response. And we ask that God would restore his presence, in fact, to his sanctuary. Strikingly, our um, parashiot, our passages from the last couple weeks and the coming couple weeks as well as tonight, talk about the construction of that sanctuary, the original sanctuary, the Mishkan, where God was very, very much present. We ask that that will be the reality yet again in Jerusalem as part of our response now in paragraphs 5 and 6. We do so quietly, and we begin now. Blessed are you, O Lord, you will return, your presence to Zion. You may be seated. We continue in that throne room scene, so to speak, now, as we turn now to pages 1536 and 1537. No, you will not find those that many pages in the Siddur. <laughs> so in the in the uh, pew Bibles, not the blue ones, but the other ones, turn to pages 1536 and 1537 for our Tehillat Abrit portion this evening. And uh, as is our custom, in that reading, you will get to respond with the parts that are um, indented, and I will take the parts that come out to the margin. And I will join you in the closing verse. Revelation 4, 2 to 11. Ukraga hayiti varuach vekine kise nira vashamayim vechad yoshe val hakise. I was there in heaven. Before me stood a throne, and on the throne someone was sitting. The one sitting there gleamed like diamonds and rubies, and a rainbow shining like 
emeralds encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and on the throne sat 24 elders. From the throne came lightnings and voices and thunderings, and before the throne were seven flaming torches. In front of the throne was a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living beings. Verse 8, each of the four living beings had six wings, and day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is Adonai, God of heaven's armies, the one who was, who is, and who is coming. And whenever the living beings give glory, honor, and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, to the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before the one sitting on the throne who lives forever and ever, and they worship him. They throw their crowns in front of the throne, and they say, You are worthy, Adonai Eloheinu, to have glory, honor, and power, because you created all things. Yes, because of your will they were created and came into being. We rise once again facing Jerusalem as we now respond to the king. And our response found in the words of the Shema, pages 30 to 40, 34 to 49, pardon me, 34 to 39, I'll get the numbers straight. Um, that response is, in fact, our community affirmation, but also our affirmation as individuals within that community that we want him to be not only the great king of the world, but the king over the whole of our lives. So we respond on pages 34 to 39. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ba'ashem Tevot Ve'uto Le'olam Ha'ayed Ve'ahavta Et Adonai Elohecha, Bechol Lavavcha, Uchol Nashecha, Uchol Neodecha, Vehayu Hadvarim Haehile, Ashen Ochihim at Safka Hayom Aleva Vecha, Vashinan Tahaham Leva Necha, Vadibartaha Bam, Boshif Techa, Beve Techa, Uvlechtecha hava derech, uvshoftecha uvkomecha, uksharatam leot al yadecha, vahayu leta tofohot beine necha, uchtahavtan al mezuzohot beitecha, uv ish arecha. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Blessed be he whose glorious kingdom is eternal. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your life and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as reminders on your hands and bind them on your forehead. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. We've asked that this become a reality in our lives. We now anticipate that that will become a reality in our world. In the words of Vahi Bin So on pages 88 and 89, we look forward to the time when from Zion will go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord out of Jerusalem. Vahi Bin So Aaron Vayomeher Moshe Kuma Adonai, Vaya Futsu, Oivecha, Vaya Nusu, Metanecha, Mipanecha, Ki Mitzion, Tetze, Tohora, Ki Mitzion, Tetze, Tohora, Udavar Adonai, Mirushalahim, Baharuk Shanatan, Torah, Tohora, Baharuk Shanatan, Torah, Torah, Le'amo Yisrael, 
And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forward, Moses would say, O rise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. May those who hate you flee from before you. For from Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord out of Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people, Yisrael. Mishabarach Avotenu, Abraham Yitzchak the Yaakov. He who blessed our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he bless Kerry, may he bless John, who have come up to honor God in the Torah. May the Holy One bless them and their families and send blessing and prosperity on all the work of their hands. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher bachar banu mikol ha'amim, Venatan lahanu et tohorato, Baruch atah Adonai, Notein ha'tohorah. Bless the Lord who is blessed. Bless the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe who chose us from all peoples and gave to us the Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Vareber Adonai el Moshe lemor, ki tisa et rosh b'nei Yisrael, lifkudehem, benatnu ish kofer nafsho, ladonai bifkod otam. You may be seated. And uh, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When you, um, usual translation, um, uh, count the uh, children of Israel, literally the text does say, lift up the heads of the children of Israel. And every time we get to one of these passages, and there are a couple or three in the Torah, I remind you, when God counts, he doesn't diminish the personhood of the person. He elevates it so literally counting is raising the head of these people. Anyhow, when you count them, uh, then each person will uh, give kofer. It's the term that is the term for atonement. But it is not atonement as often is understood. Kafar, the verb for, means to ransom by means of substitute. However, it's used in a different way here. We'll give to God a kofer for themselves, um, uh, when you count them. In effect, what is happening here is the way in which the counting took place is each person would come, drop the coin, and someone later would come and do what? Count the number of coins. And so we've counted the people. Interesting. But anyhow, I find even more interesting something, and that is that it is called in this text Kofir, because it's in this very text that we find um, that interesting response of the people of Israel to Moses' absence. They make a golden calf. But in a sense, Kofir here has set the stage for what takes place after that. As Moses has the discussion with God in chapters 33 and 34 at the very end of our Parsha, he in effect ask God to do exactly that, to ransom these people despite what has just happened. And in, and in that case, he says, feel free to take my life 
in their place. Striking image there. But God's response isn't that. God's response is, in response to a question raised by Moses, to allow Moses to see him, not quite face to face, but pretty close to it. And when he does so, God, how should we put it, expresses his essence, his nature to Moses as what kind of God he is, which also has bearing then on his response to the people of the golden calf. I'm the Lord. God, overflowing in mercy, abounding in super kindness. Uh, the Hebrew runs out of phrases here. Overflowing in graciousness and mercy, who forgives the sins of his people for thousands of generations. That's the one who was also present in his sanctuary, the one that the people are in the middle of building as we go through this text. Much more stuff in the text, but I've gone on long enough. We'll stop for now. Baruch Ata Harunai Elohein Humelech Haolam Asher Natan Lahan Hutora Hateme Lehaiolam Natabato Hainu Baruch Ata Arunai Utain Hatora Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and life everlasting planted in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord giver of the Torah. He is the one who's the giver of the Torah. We now acknowledge it like our ancestors acknowledged it when they first received it at Mount Sinai. As they stood before the Lord, now we stand before him and we acknowledge the same thing that they acknowledged, that these are the words that come directly from God as he delivered them to the hands of Moses and gave them to us as his people. Vizot HaTorah, pages 98 and 99. Transliteration, should you need it, is page 95. Vizot HaTorah, Ashes HaMoshe, Lifnei Bane Yisrael, Alpi Adonai, this is the Torah which Moses placed before the children of Israel, and is accord of the Lord's command by the hand of Moses. The blessing was life everlasting that he plant in our midst. That sets the stage for our response now. It's Chaim Ki, pages 96 and 97. We acknowledge that it is a tree of life that is intended to be planted deep in our lives and therefore to shape our lives, so we say, renew our days as of old. Again, pages 96 and 97. <laughs> A tree of life it is to those who take hold of it, and happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Turn us, Lord, to you, and let us return. Renew our days as of old. On pages 98 and 99, Uvnu Hoyomar reminds us, with our days renewed as of old, we are better equipped to stand before him as his priests. So we do exactly that. We stand before him now and respond on pages 98 and 99. 
Uvnocho Yomar, Shuvah Adonai, Revavot Alfei Yisrael. When the ark rested, Moses would say, Return, O Lord, to the myriads of Israel's families. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and your mighty ark. Clothe your priests with righteousness. May those who have experienced your faithful love shout for joy. For the sake of your servant David, don't delay the return of your Messiah. Ba'avor David avdecha, al tashay penei meshichecha. Ki lechach to natati lechem, torati al ta'azovu. I give you good instruction. Do not forsake my Torah. Okay, now that I have been officially blown my kiss, we'll continue our conversations after the service. There's a statement that goes around that you often hear that in some way characterizes our society. That saying is, seeing is believing. And in fact, interestingly enough, in last night's class at the yeshiva, we talked about, we spent some time talking, a little bit of time talking about just this. Yes, as you are well aware, that was a commercial for the yeshiva classes. Unfortunately, you can get in real trouble following that motto. I mean, after all, ads and links are made to get your attention, to show you something and get you to believe their claims but can you really believe what they show you? Technology is such that, for example, movies, as well as other video um, presentations, uh, have incorporated tremendous special effects. But is what you're seeing then real? Or is it even really there? Perhaps too often then seeing is believing becomes instead, instead, seeing is deceiving. Now, Yaakov, Yeshua's brother, James, is also concerned about, about appearances and about deception, and particularly so in key areas that, are, that affect our daily lives. So he tells us how to avoid deception in these crucial areas that are so vital to our lives. Yaakov, chapter 1, verses 13 to the end. Uh, basically, if you want to follow along, follow along in the alternate pew Bible, the blue one. And in case you're going to have trouble finding Yaakov, uh, the text is page 252. So feel free to follow along as we sort of walk our way through this particular text. Anyhow, how to avoid deception in these crucial areas that are so vital to our lives. First, in effect, what he says in verses 13 to 18 is we need to understand temptation. So he begins by saying in verse 13 that God is not the source of temptation. He points out that he has no moral depravity. There are no defects or flaws in him to appeal to. He is, as we have emphasized, as we were part of the sanctuary this evening, part of his sanctuary this evening, he is holy. And in fact, the text both in Revelation and the one found in Kedushah, the third paragraph of the Amidah, reminds us in a threefold fashion, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Therefore, it's inconsistent to think that God is the author or source of temptation, as apparently some of these people did, and 
some of that has spilled over into our day and age as well. Temptation, Yaakov points out, arises from within people themselves, verses 14 and 15. As he says here, it's the result of their own desires. Now what you have here, interestingly enough, is a striking image from fishing. Uh, and you can see part of it, particularly in the New International Version's translation here. Um, he pictures people being dragged away and enticed. In other words, it's an image from fishing in which you get, have the drawing the fish out of hiding by attracting its attention and getting it to approach the hook and then luring it by use of bait to swallow the hook. The image here is the same. But here, we are hooked or snared by our own bait, the text tells us. Take note of this, given the text that you have here. Peep, this was all um, sort of a semi-humorous line for a while. Uh, I was about to say a few years ago, but it may be the last century. But anyhow, people would say, the devil made me do it. Or it might, they might say, I can't help myself. What Yaakov is pointing out here is that is deception. I mean, Joshua himself, at the end of the book of Joshua, when he took leave for the people, said, you've got a choice that you can make. You get to do it. So choose today to serve the Lord. Now, some people think that since God is all-powerful and in control, he brings temptations in, temptation into our lives. This, Yaakov is saying, is deception. We need to take responsibility for our own lives and decisions, not shift it to others, not shift it to God, not shift it to things, and by no means shifting it to demons. In verses 16 to 18, we have a corrective. Verse 16 simply says, don't be deceived, don't be misled. By the way, this is a common introduction to a significant statement. And here the significant statement is, don't be deceived because God is the source of good, not evil. Verse 17. And he, sa and he says there that God sends what is good and perfect. Good, namely beneficial or wholesome. Perfect, uh, not defective or something that's appropriate. And furthermore, because he's not involved in temptation, he's not interested in destruction or temptation, but in fact in construction. So, he can be completely counted on to be the source of good and perfect things for our lives. Further, verse 18, we're told that he's the source of life, not death or anything leading to it. Um, in our translations, our translation of the Living Scriptures, uh, it talks about new lives. Literally, the text says here, give birth. And so it's appropriate that our translation then talks about us becoming children in his family. And then he tells us how that takes place, the agency that he uses. It is the word, the word of truth. And then he talks about us being his first children. Wait a second first children? What about Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, and so forth? This is a direct reference. This is, let me change, let me back that up for just a second. The text literally says we are the first fruits. And when he says first fruits, what is he talking about? He's talking about harvest. And where was the harvest of first fruits? It took place in Yaakov's day at Shavuot in Acts chapter 2. And the first fruits as it's understood, are seen as the down payment of something agriculturally. So what we have here, as Yaakov is describing it, is a, gr a down payment on the great mob of people through the ages that became followers of Yeshua. That mob began a lot sooner than most people give credit for it. Acts chapter 21, um, this same Yaakov, by the way, addresses a rabbi, Rav Shaul, and he says, in this city, just in this city, Jerusalem, there are literally tens and tens of thousands of Jews who are followers of Yeshua. A scholar of the Second Temple period by the name of Bugatti pointed out that the first 100,000 followers of Yeshua were all Jews before a Gentile ever snuck in. 
he didn't put in before a Gentile never snuck in, but that, that's my footnote on there. The person who's called the father of church history, Neander, pointed out that by the end of the first century in Israel alone, there were over one million Jewish followers of Yeshua out of a population of something just shy of three million. Yes, down payment on a great mob of people, even in this day, his day and age. Well, then we must not just understand temptation, we must now understand growth. That's the rest of the chapter, verses 19 to 27. You see, growth should naturally follow on the heels of birth. We talked about birth just a minute or two ago. As the word was the agent in the former, in the birth part, so also in the latter. So what, our what should our response be? Our response should be first, accept the word, the word of truth. As the text begins in that particular section, it reminds us that we need to listen. We need to listen. In effect, it is telling us that talking gets in the way of hearing, verse 19. On the other hand, anger, which he also describes there, whether it's over circumstances, whether it's frustration over our failures or shortcomings, anger clouds the mind and distracts us from listening, verse 20. So he says in verse 21, therefore get rid of, and this is my paraphrase of what he's saying, get rid of the clutter and garbage that, uh, that might obstruct receiving and accepting the word, the word which does produce results. How? Well, second part of verse 20, middle part of verse 21. We are to accept the word humbly. We are to be glad. That, in effect, is the only way to be truly and effectively, and uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at, to truly and effectively receive God's truth. Uh, in, our in our translation here, he describes it at his, as his message. And then he describes further in that receiving of the truth that it is planted in us. Um, our translation uses the term takes hold of. That's not bad, but planted in us is what's essential here. Just like the word Etzchayim is intended to be planted in us as well as we responded. Well, anyhow, our translation talks about being able to save souls. Souls? Well, as it turns out, the term that's used here in Greek, since there are, there's at least one, but the Greek professor is not here tonight. There's one who's taking Greek. The Greek term that's used here is suke. Suke comes from the Hebrew term nefesh. And the Hebrew term nefesh is too often misunderstood as well. It's a reference to the person, to the whole of the person. Able to save souls. Look, the text is not suggesting that they need salvation in the theological sense. Here, the term is used to uh, indicate rescue from their circumstances or rescue from our circumstances. Oh, by the way, quick aside to step out of the story for just a minute, salvation too often, even theologically, is misunderstood because too often it's seen as just an individual's relationship with God. It is far broader than that. It's, in fact, a term that is cosmic in nature. But that's a different story. Let's get back to our story here. So, He's not suggesting the need for salvation in that sense, but he's talking about rescue from their circumstances. But stressing, but he is stressing the power, the power of the word as a source of changed life, of life new and abundant. And in fact, our translation here emphasizes that if you read carefully, it is in fact able to do this. It reminded me of a text that we haven't gotten to yet, we will a few weeks down, well, it'll be a little more than a few weeks down the road. It's the heart, it's the heart of the Torah. I mean, literally, when we raise the Torah to this text, you'll see, oh, we're about halfway through. It's Leviticus chapter 18, verse 5. God says, follow these instructions and guidelines. By doing so, you will live. Again, it's Chaim He. Renew our days as of old, so we live life to the fullest. So, we accept the word, and therefore, we also need to act the word, verses 22 to 25. Don't just ponder the word, practice it, verse 22 says. 
And that, in effect, in effect, is the key to this particular book. By the way, it's very much the thrust of another book called Proverbs. So don't congratulate yourself on reading it. That is important, but it's inadequate, he says. Concretize it. Put it into action. Act the word. Otherwise, as he points out, you're just fool fooling yourself. In fact, those who read and don't act have a greater responsibility and vulnerability than those who don't read. And why should we act on it? Well, he gives an important illustration to help us understand that in verses 23 to 25. Now, for Judaism, hearing involves obeying. That's at the heart of the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. But it doesn't stop there. It talks about the stuff we need to do to follow through in following God. And at the end of verse 25, he will conclude by saying, there's a blessing in store. Why? And for whom? Well, the text tells us or describes someone who's looking steadily. In other words, they're eagerly and intensely or intensively, both of those terms work, searching for its message. The rabbi of old, as he wrote a letter to his student, 2 Timothy 2.15 stresses the same thing. We are to study, to demonstrate that, or to enable us to become fully equipped to handle that word, to fully and effectively equip. And if you look carefully at the, at the uh, end of this verse, verse 25 in our translation, you'll notice it isn't just looking steadily, it, in, it involves someone who keeps looking. In other words, continue this practice. Psalm 1 is a wonderful example or illustration of what happens when a person ju does just this, but we don't have time to look at that. I just throw it out there for you. Because a person who does this, he points out in his text, will remember, in other words, not forgetting what the person has heard or read. It means it has become part of the person. And that, too, is what's at the heart of the Shema. It's a, so much a part of us that it is part of us when we sit down and we get up, when we lie down and when we wake up, when we're in the house, when we go out of the house and come back into the house and so forth. He says this kind of person, because it has become part of him, will do what it says. This kind of person will put the truth into practice. In other words, this kind of person acts the word. When we process the Torah on Rosh Kodesh through the synagogue, Part of our response is, Hear, O Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Just this, to fear him, to serve him, to love him, and here it is, to walk in all his ways. In other words, act out the word. And then I'm going to move away from the translation that's here and share with you the translation that's in the New International Version. It says, that all this takes place because what's involved here is the perfect law that gives freedom. Let that sink in. It's an excellent translation, both contextually and grammatically. It's the perfect law, and it gives freedom. That should not surprise us. Psalm 119, verse 45 says, I will walk about in freedom. Why? For I have sought out your precepts. That's another term to describe the material that's in the Torah. And no wonder then the rabbi could say, concerning what is often translated the law, but mistranslated, he says it is holy and just, ready, and good. And then a couple verses later, he says it's spiritual, which is the exact opposite of the way many people handle it. By the way, um, this translation is a perfect law that gives freedom. I think it's in the New American Standard Version that it is called the royal law of liberty. That covers it as well. Okay, we act the word. Then we also need to assimilate the word, verses 26 and 27. And there are some specific significant ways to put truth into practice. One has to do with um, speech, verse 26. And here you have a description of what is often called the uncontrolled tongue. 
And he says here, the uncontrolled tongue is an indicator that you are involved in a sham, worthless religion. The uncontrolled tongue, he further says, indicates that you're involved in self-deception and ultimately in others' destruction, which is why this is so much a part of what Judaism is all about. And this is, does not surprise us. Judaism speaks out regularly ab about or against Lashon hara, hara, speaking negatively about others. And then the uncontrolled tongue is a reminder that um, our religious facts have not then made a difference in the way in which we live and react. Acceptable religion, from God's point of view, affects our lives. There is a life-changing inner reality that expresses itself in concrete, observable ways. And the, the controlled tongue is just one example. Then in verse 27, he gives us another, two more examples. He talks about active sacrificial concern for and involvement with others. And then he reminds us as that verse closes, verse 27, faithfulness to God and distinctiveness from the crowd are other examples or characteristics. Please do not misunderstand this. I'm going to bring the commentary from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 to 8, a favorite commentary of at least a couple of us in here. And that is, God says through Moses, if you follow these guidelines, the nations of the world will say, OMG, I know I threw that in there. Oh my gosh, what a wise and understanding people this is that has a God so near to them that he hears their prayers and has such wise and wonderful guidelines and principles by which they live. That's the thing that is, that's the way in which we're supposed to be distinct. So that others can see differences and they are attracted to them, not repelled by them, which is the way too often it works in people's lives. Anyhow, let's draw this to a conclusion. God doesn't want us to be deceived or to fool ourselves. So through Yaakov, he tells us how to avoid being duped in certain areas critical to our lives and crucial to our relationship to God. He wants us to understand temptation and growth. We understand temptation when, in fact, we realize that God is the source of life and that he's provided great things for us as we encounter life. We understand growth when we accept the word holy and humbly, when we act the word continually and consistently, when we assimilate the word thoughtfully and thoroughly. You see, it's not enough to listen to or read the word. That's insufficient. And it's also insufficient to superficially participate in religion. However, it is necessary to allow the word, the word to change and to shape you. Back to Etz Chaim He again. If we allow it to soak into our lives, it shapes, it renews our days as of old. Let me conclude as Yaakov concluded this particular section. Religion, last verse. Religion that God our Father accepts is pure and faultless. And it is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep ourselves from being polluted by the world. I remind you about Joshua. Choose today how you will live, how you respond. Take the next minute or so in quiet to contemplate and to respond.
in keeping with one of the themes of our evening together or reflections about our evening together, we turn to pages 102 to 107, the Elenu. We stand face Jerusalem yet again, and we anticipate that time when the world will be perfected under the rule of the Lord Almighty. God will once again be present in his sanctuary. So we conclude this part of the evening as we began the first part of the evening. The Lord will be present in his sanctuary. Pages 102 to 107. Alleno le shabach la adon hon ha kol, la tait gudu la leotzer vereshit, shelo asano kogaye haratzot, velo hosamano ke meshpachota adama, shelo sam helke nu kahem, vego hora le nu kechal hamonam, vehanach nu korim, O Mishachavim, O Modim, Livne Melech, Mache Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruchu, Shehuno Teshamahim, Voyoser Aharetz, O Moshav Yakaro, Bashamayim, Imal, Hushchina Tuzo, Hushchina Tuzo, Begave Meromim. Hu Elohein, Hu Einod. Emet Malkein, Hu Ephesulato, Kakatu Batorato, Vayadata Hayom, Vahashevota, Elevavecha Ki Adonai, Hu Elohim, Bashamai Mimaal, Veal Haarehetz Mitahat, Ain old. Together, it is incumbent upon us to praise the Master of all, to exalt the Creator of the world, where He has made us distinct from the nations and unique among the families of the earth. Our destiny is not like theirs, our calling is our task. We bow down and acknowledge before the King of Kings that there is none like Him. For He stretched forth the heavens like a tent and established the earth. Truly, there is none like our Lord and King. As the Torah says, you shall know this day and reflect in your heart that it is the Lord who is God in the heavens above, and on the earth beneath there is none else. We hope, O Lord our God, to soon behold your majestic glory, when all abominations shall be removed and all false gods shall be at an end. Then shall the world be perfected under the rule of the Lord Almighty, and all mankind shall call upon your name. For to you every knee must bow and every tongue declare that you are God. Reign over us soon and forever. May the kingdom of David's greater son be established forever. For then shall the words be fulfilled. The Lord shall be king forever. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. On that day the Lord shall be one. And his name one. amar v'haya Adonai Bayom ha hu, bayom ha hu, ye ye Adonai echad. Hu shamo, hu shamo, hu shamo echad. Please be seated. And now Patrice comes to share with us the friendly reminders. Good evening, Shabbat Shalom. Listen, listen, the ship is listing this way and this side is like up in the air. So we, we have to do something about you know spreading. It's just my problem. Um, <clears throat> As always, uh, our announcements are here in uh, today, the red, red uh, program. It says, uh, Stump the Stars starts again on Saturday, March 9th. So next, oh, it's this month. Oh, golly. So today, all day, I'm going, it's March. And I'm going, no, it's not March. Yeah, it's March. Oh, I don't. All right. No, Patrice, just you have this problem. Okay, it's fine. It's all fine. 
Shabbat school is next Friday, and the dates for subsequent Shabbat school times are there. Um, please, <laughs> okay, remember how I have this ongoing discussion with you about the very, very sad state of the health of this air conditioner right here? Remember, we've, we've talked about that now for uh, three or four months. Yeah, except this week, guess which side went out? This one over here. Now it has gotten fixed. And should we need it in the next, you know, month? We might. Um, it will be, uh, I think, back on track. But we still need to replace this one. So that's still something. Um, the blue boxes are for uh, any offerings that you can give toward that project or any project. We have many, many projects that you could become involved in. Um, you can also give through PayPal. You can give through Zelle. We're very accommodating to our... I was going to say customers, but I, bet I better not say that. Um, oh, by the way, I noticed when I was reading this that something has been left out. Do, 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 do. You, you either? Okay, let's... It, it, yes, uh, right under welcome. There should be something very important that should be listed here. Okay, here's a secret message for my Hebrew students. Ain Purim. There is an Ain Purim. Ine. So anyway, Purim is three weeks from tonight, whether you're having fun or not. And um, uh, I've been looking up things. It, it should be very interesting what I've seen. Here's something that you might find interesting. So before COVID, uh, I think the Purim, the very first Purim that we had maybe during that first part of, of COVID, I looked in the on the interwebs to find anything that I could see about Purim plays or spiels or, you know, things, silly things to do in Purim. There were, there were some, I would say, maybe 15 or less. And I looked during the week, and guess what I saw about Purim on the interwebs? Only about 150,000 Purim plays, activities, fun stuff to do, costumes, jokes, spiels, songs. Anyway, so we can all harvest those, and we will be using some of them for our, for our party, which is the 23rd, Saturday night, 6 o'clock, starting with um, potluck and then going on to the silly stuff, which is the fun part. So Saturday night. 23rd. All right. I think I'm done unless you there's something else still left undone on here. We're good? Well, um, I should say goodbye to all of our um, happy trails to you until we meet again. Yes, I'm singing to you way out in the ethernet who've been faithfully watching us at various times and saying now we're going to sort of shut your part down so that we can do our congregational praying, praying and sharing. And so we say thank you for watching us tonight. Thank you for listening. And we look forward to seeing you.